Hello everybody, this is a review of chapter 4. So let's start with what the contents were in chapter 4. Let's do a little bit of an overview and then let's preview chapter 5 so that you can see the kinds of things to expect as you read the chapter that is all about the American Revolution. So the first thing that we learned about in this chapter, chapter 4, was slavery and empire. So we learned about how enslaved people lived differently and worked differently depending on what region of North America they lived in. So slaves in the South, of course, were living different lives than slaves that were far up north in New England, for example. Then we learned all about their cultures and the way that they resisted slavery. This is part of the chapter where Eric Foner, the author, is going to tell you all about the ways that slaves use things like language and songs and music to actively form the African-American culture that we know now. Empire of Freedom and Public Sphere are the next two sections in this part of the chapter. And while we didn't discuss them a whole lot in class, these are important parts of what established the meaning of liberty that a lot of the colonists are going to kind of call upon when the American Revolution begins in chapter 5. So you're going to start seeing a lot of things that relate to this part of the chapter in the next one. Uh, as far as the last parts of chapter 4, they include the Great Awakening, which we talked about at length in class, the specific challenges that they had, the Great Awakening preachers had against the old lights, the old preachers, the old churches like the Puritans, for example. Then parts of the chapter that we didn't really discuss in class, but that you should still look into and you should still review are parts like the imperial rivalries between the Spanish and the French, for example. And of course, the battle that they had in the French and Indian War, er, or what the Europeans called the Seven Years War. This is an important point in, in our chapter. This is the part where the British and their allies, the Indians, fight against the French and their allies, the Indians. And this war that they fought happened between 17, 17, uh, 70, no, 1754, excuse me, to 1763. This is the French and Indian War. And even though this war was a little over um, seven years in, in the American continent, we know it as the uh, French and Indian War. So let's preview a little bit more about what's going to happen in Chapter 5. In Chapter 5, we're going to start learning about the roots and the significance of the Stamp Act. So we're going to start off with this specific law that the British passed right after the end of the French and Indian War in 1763 that is going to lead a lot of colonists to start asking themselves whether they want to participate in this British Empire any longer, whether they want to declare independence. Then we're going to get into the key events that divided the British and the colonists between the 1760s and the early 1770s. This is what we know as the Road to Revolution. Eric Foner uses this name to talk about the 1760s and the 1770s. And then comes the key events that mark the move toward independence, or what Foner calls the coming of independence. So we're going to learn about things like Common Sense, which was a pamphlet distributed by a man named Thomas Paine. And then finally, we're going to learn about how the American forces, the American colonists, were able to fight and win the Revolutionary War against the British Navy, which is the strongest naval power on Earth at the, mom at the moment that we're talking about here between 1763 and 1783. And so we're going to learn all about the actual war and the fighting. And this is the content of Chapter 5, just a little preview of what we know as the American Revolutionary War. American Revolutionary War. Alrighty then. So, I hope you learned something new. I hope this was helpful. Bye-bye.